Hello everybody, I'm Kenneth J. Ratnam. Some of you may know me as the leader of the Reform Party. We stood for election for the first time in 2011, where we achieved probably the same percentage of the votes as some of the other parties that have been around 30 years. This was despite a complete media blackout on us. Shortly, I'm going to talk to you more about what the Reform Party stands for. But first, let me say a few more words about myself. I graduated from Cambridge with a first-class honours degree in economics. I wanted to work in Singapore, but was unable to. I have lived and worked abroad for about 20 years, not by choice, but because I had to do that to make a living. When I came back in 2008, I was asked to take over as leader of the Reform Party. I wouldn't have done so if I didn't feel that I could propose better policies than the PAP and a better economic paradigm for Singapore. Some of you may read, have read about my policies and my ideas in my blog, which is sonofthedud.com. Some of you have said that's a funny name for a blog, Son of the Dud refers to Lee Kuan Yew, who talked about JBJ and Chi Sun Juan as being duds who had to be kept out of Parliament at all costs. My objective in this blog is to imagine a different economic future, one with better policies that are aimed not just at boosting GDP growth through the import of workers from uh, cheap labour countries, but one in which we concentrate on raising productivity and real incomes for all Singaporeans. A future in which we don't have two secretive sovereign wealth funds about which the government feels no necessity to tell us anything, but where you own shares directly. A future in which everyone has universal health coverage, so that if you have a catastrophic illness, you do not have to risk bankruptcy or the bankruptcy of your relatives in order to get treatment. Now, the government will say that Singapore can't possibly afford all these things, that it will bankrupt us. I have said this is nonsense. Instead, we should focus on what the government has been doing with our savings all these years and why the returns appear to be so poor. Many of you have gone without Many of your, your parents or your grandparents worked for years and then retired without adequate savings and had to continue working, essentially till you died. We wanted these questions answered as to why the government needed to extract such a huge surplus from the people and provide very little in the way of services in return. The PAP have announced something called the National Conversation. This is after the election of 2011 that they will tell you it was a watershed election. Well, let me tell you that it wasn't. For one thing, 40% of you voted for opposition candidates, but the end result was only 6% of the seats in Parliament. For another thing, the only opposition party who is represented in Parliament seems to feel obliged to vote with the government on every issue. So things haven't changed and things are not going to get better until you vote in a party that will bring about real change, one that puts you at the centre, one that doesn't focus on the wrong variables. We want to restore your fundamental rights that have been taken away from you, not because we don't think bread and butter issues are important, but because without your fundamental rights, you are not going to be able to put right your lack of economic power. So we want to restore your rights to freedom of expression and abolish the Newspaper and Printing Presses Act. We want to ensure that you can vote without fear of being denied HDB upgrading. We want to stop the system in which the government owns all the land and in which you are merely leaseholders for 99 years. We want to stop national service in which you are not paid adequate compensation for what you do. We want to see that you have a stake in the sovereign wealth funds 
because you bear all the risk. We want to give you the freedom to choose how much you want to save in CPF and to withdraw your money when you want, not when the government tells you because it's convenient or it helps to boost their returns in GIC to delay your repayment. The PAP often say to you there's really no alternative to their policies, to their paradigm. They say do without foreign workers and we risk slower economic growth and lower wages. Frankly, this is economic bullshit. It doesn't make sense. What matters is productivity growth. And our productivity record has been one of the lowest in, in the developed world. The PAP will say we can't have competition in politics because we'll have deadlock. Again, this is absolute rubbish. It's only through competition that we get stronger, that we get innovation. If you look at the economic landscape in, in the United States of companies 50 years ago, and see where those companies are today, you see that they're very different companies, and it should be the same in politics. We need change and renewal if we are to innovate, if we are to progress. And the PAP are scared of innovation, they're scared of competition. When the Reform Party was set up, it was intended that it should be, in miniature, a model of how a democracy should work. That is why we are unique among political parties in Singapore in not having a cadre system. Anyone can stand for election. There's no entrenched elite. And that is how the country should be. In future talks, I hope to discuss more with you about our policies and also to show you where we have gone wrong over the last 50 years. We are not going to improve our living standards by playing the same old tune again and again that we've heard for the last 50 years. Thank you.